Hey everyone, welcome back to another hardware news recap. For this week, we're talking about GPU market share between AMD and NVIDIA. We'll also be talking about the upcoming H500P mesh, and I suppose to a lesser degree, the H500M. And we've got items on memory prices. So good news there. Memory production should increase by 2020. We'll start somewhere, I guess. Before that, this video is brought to you by the new CableMod Pro Series. CableMod's new Pro Cables come with pre-installed closed combs for clean builds, accompanied by a revamped color, style, and vibrance. The cables are now using thicker wires, and they've also added right-angled internal USB 3.0 extension and right-angled SATA data cables. Buy the Pro Series cable kits at the link below, or customize your cable set with the configurator also linked below. So for the H500P mesh, this we've already basically detailed at CES, but to recap some of the newest items coming out of Cooler Master, the case is now available for pre-order. So we would recommend, of course, that you don't pre-order computer hardware in general, but uh, it's out there. So it's supposed to launch, according to Newegg, on March 16th. We should be reviewing one. It will not be coming from Cooler Master. No one is surprised at that fact. But we do have a pretty special review lined up for it, so make sure you subscribe and check back when the case launches. We'll probably be a day or two behind everyone else. But uh, big changes for the H500P mesh include, of course, the mesh front. It's got also changes to the structure. So the things that we opened our review of the H500P with, with it falling apart, those have all been addressed. We'll see how good the fixes are. Uh, but basically, there's a screw in the back of the top panel now, which secures it to the case. And the front panel is now using a tooth, basically, to mount it to the case as well. A uh, power supply shroud has been improved, and there are a couple of other changes as well, like the tempered glass panel no longer wobbles, according to what they told us at CES. So that's all in the CES video. The only real news here is that it's 150 bucks for the H500P mesh in white, and that it will be available in mid-March, basically. It looks like March 16th. Samsung is building another fab near Piontech, South Korea. The new P2 project, as it's called, will be constructed next to an existing fab, which broke ground in 2015. Samsung plans to have invested a total of 30 trillion Korean won, or $27.8 billion, in the existing fab by 2021, and is considering investing the same amount in the new P2 project although it's still in the planning phase. A decision has not yet been made between DRAM and NAND production, but Anantech points out that if rumors are correct and P2 is bigger than the previous fab, it will be big enough to produce both. Building is intended to be complete by the end of second quarter 2019, so this decision must be made soon. It'll take several years for the fab to ramp up to full capacity once construction is finished, but Samsung's plan is to help alleviate current demand with additional supply of NAND and or DRAM. The Hades Canyon Intel NUC with AMD graphics that was shown at CES this January is intended to launch this month, but Korean site Playwares has already torn an engineering sample down and has posted benchmark results. The bulk of the article is filled with pictures of unboxing, teardown, and screenshots of everything from BIOS to driver installation, but there are also a wide variety of synthetic and game benchmarks. Benchmark results can't be precisely compared across websites, especially not with a product that hasn't been released yet, but Playware's results show 30 to 60 FPS average in most games that they tested at 1080p with very high or ultra presets. They also speculate that lower graphics settings could push this higher. Intel's ready for take two on their microcode updates. These are the same updates that caused issues with crashes on Broadwell and Haswell when they were first posted, which Intel more or less recalled from the manufacturers at that time. So the patches that caused those unexpected reboots on Broadwell and Haswell have now been corrected and are being distributed to OEMs with the fixed version. The fixed revision will have microcode updates for 6th, 7th, and 8th generation Intel processors, and that includes the latest Core X series, Xeon scalable CPUs, and Xeon D for data centers. Intel's also made a microcode revision guidance PDF that should help OEMs and manufacturers with making sure they're up to spec, and uh, providing a schedule for updates that includes planned fixes for CPUs as old as the Wolfdale family, which released in 2008. EK Waterblocks announced its EKFC Radeon Vega block, an RGB illuminated full coverage water block for AMD RX Vega graphics cards, compatible with the reference PCB and VRM, and partner cards that use the reference PCB. 
Being that this is a full coverage block, it'll contact the GPU, HBM2, and VRM power components using a nickel-plated copper cold blade underneath. An acrylic window reveals that liquid will pass through the L-shaped VRM into a small set of microfins over the GPU and HBM2 and then complete the loop. The microfins are primarily located directly over the GPU and HBM2 as expected. It doesn't look like a dense array of them from the photos we've seen, but we'll see how it does in testing for anyone who does test it. I don't know that we will for this one. But uh, notably, the thermal testing we did on the air-cooled versions of the card with the reference PCB did find that stock, the MOSFETs, actually did really well. So they don't really need a lot of help. Uh, so on that side, you're already in good shape, and then water will just make it that much better, as it usually does. The water block is also capable of synchronizing with most motherboard manufacturer RGB solutions, and it's compatible with 56, 64, and Frontier Edition, and sold for $130, with backplates available additionally for $30 to $40. John Petty Research released its latest report heavily focusing on cryptocurrency and crypto mining, particularly as they pertain to GPU availability. The report indicates that attachment rate of GPUs to systems has gone up to 136%, meaning that the average system is now equipped with multiple graphics cards, and we all know that's not for SLI or Crossfire. Overall, JPR indicates a desktop GPU shipment decline of 4.8% year over year, with the fourth quarter down approximately 1.5% from the previous quarter. The company also noted that the latter decline is somewhat seasonal and expected. Despite all of this, JPR reports that AMD has managed to gain 6.5 percentage points in total market share, with the company suggesting an NVIDIA decline of 6.5 percentage points quarter to quarter, obviously, as it's a duopoly. We don't know the breakdown of where AMD's biggest gains are against NVIDIA, but crypto mining is a good bet for major growth sectors. JPR reports that AMD holds 33.7% of the total GPU market, discrete GPU market, up from 27.2% in the previous quarter, with NVIDIA holding 66.3%, down from 72.8%. Year over year, however, comparing the same quarters, AMD is up a total of 4.2 percentage points from their previous position, with NVIDIA's stats inversely proportional, obviously. AMD CEO Lisa Su previously indicated an increase in production to sate some crypto mining demand, while NVIDIA's latest financial report noted an estimated $220 million in board sales to crypto miners split between fiscal quarters two and three. As for gamers, JPR stated, quote, Gaming has been and will continue to be the primary driver for GPU sales, augmented by the demand from cryptocurrency miners. We expect demand to slacken from the miners as margins drop in response to increasing utilities costs and supply and demand forces drive up AIB prices. Prices will not drop in the near future. End quote from JPR. So if that's to be believed, not great news on the pricing situation. The main thing that's not being factored in here is a potential new GPU release. We're not presently expecting a gaming grade GPU announcement at the upcoming GTC show, which is NVIDIA's own graphics technology conference. This is something we discussed in the latest Ask GN episode, but at present, it does not look like there will be a new gaming GPU launch at that show. If there's any GPU launch at all, it'll probably be scientific or data center, but we're really not sure because that's not that's out of our coverage spectrum. So uh, for now, it does look like we'll be handing out to Pascal and Vega or Polaris for a while longer, and hopefully the uh, the supply can catch up at some point if they're not just completely slowing it down in preparation for what's coming next. But either way, it looks like prices aren't going to change anytime soon if you believe the JPR statement. Uh, for the final news item, this one is the Fractal Meshify C Mini which follows Fractal's trend of releasing a normal case, then a mini one shortly thereafter. The Meshify C Mini is exactly what it sounds like. It's a tiny glass paneled Meshify C, and the case fits micro ATX motherboards, and it's a bit more squat proportionally, but otherwise it looks identical to the larger version, specifically the dark TG variety. Fractal's website claims that the cases are identical in length and width, and the website also suggests that the Mini is just 41 millimeters shorter at 399 millimeters versus 440. So less than two inches, basically. Although we could be missing more information there as it's not out yet. The case isn't on Newegg or Amazon currently, but Tech Power Up lists the MSRP as $90 or the same price as the normal sized Meshify C tempered glass case, the 
ATX version of the case, which we reviewed previously. So if you want to see more on that case, check the channel for Meshify, and you'll find that one alongside our H500P Meshify project. But you want the Fractal one, obviously. Uh, as for the H500P, though, coming back to the beginning where it all started, we're looking forward to that. So H500P Mesh, we'll have a review of when it launches, plus one to two days, probably. And uh, we have a lot of plans for that case. It should be pretty in-depth, even compared to our normal case reviews. So make sure you subscribe for that. But as always, check back for more. Go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus. It helps out directly. And go to store.gamersnexus.net to pre-order or back order, I should say, our next round of mod mats because uh, they are on the way. So we should have them shipping end of March or early April for the next round. That's it for this one. I'll see you all next time.